Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath. And in episode 244, I have my own business continuity and disaster recovery story to share with you. My challenge that I've had over the last few days is my own technology setup. So a bit of backstory. I have been a, a, a two and a half decade long Apple user. I switched to using a Apple desktop around the year 2000 or so. I brought my first Apple laptop probably around 2003 or 2004. And I've consistently used a Mac laptop, a MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air for most of the last 20 or so years. Even when I worked for an employer that required us to use Windows on our computing device uh, within the work environment, I still used a Mac for my personal device. And as often as I could, I would use tools like Citrix and others to allow me to access work in a secure manner while still using my beloved Mac. Um, for uh, for many years, I would buy a new Mac laptop every couple of years or so, um, up until we got to this interesting stage we're at where Apple launched their own technology. They, they launched their own chip with the Apple Silicon back in 2020. So I bought a MacBook, at one of the first M1 MacBook Pro laptops, uh, only to realize that it would only power one external monitor uh, at the time, and uh, although you can't see it here on the camera because the camera, of course, is right above my monitors, but I have two 38-inch curved LCD screens, LED screens here in front of me. So I've got quite the a number of pixels. Um, so I had to actually buy a Mac Mini uh, desktop in order to power both um, what I wanted here and then having the portability of having a laptop. At home, I only have one of these types of monitors. And that's been my computing setup for nearly four years. But now Apple's technology has really continued to evolve. And my laptop, after four years, was finally starting to show its age. So I bought a loaded 16-inch MacBook Pro um, with the M3 Max chip and a massive amount of, of unified memory, as Apple calls it, uh, and storage. And the machine itself is incredible. Um, as a part of this upgrade... I was able to consolidate back to just having one computer, right? I've got the one laptop. It, out of the box, is supposed to be able to drive these two monitors um, and then be able to have all the portability things that I want. And I'm trading a little bit of the size and the weight of this bigger laptop for this capability. But I don't travel all that much anymore. So this works. In theory, this is going to work pretty well. Um, as a part of this, I also upgraded my docking station here at the office and at home. Uh, to a newer version that has Thunderbolt 4 um, because I need that, I think, in order to power this dual monitor setup. So to make a long story short, the laptop arrived on Friday. Uh, I had a chance to really get it set up and do some things with it over the weekend. And then um, last night, I went to finally do the final integration here at the office and get the dock replaced, and that required some recabling. So I'm doing all of this. And like most of you, I spend most of my day in front of a camera. I'm in meetings. I am recording this podcast. I'm recording uh, our digital courses. Uh, I, I'm uh, doing all of the things that we all have to do in this post-COVID era in front of a camera. And video has become more and more a part of our content process, right? We do our podcast in both audio and video format. Um, and we have other videos that we do throughout the week which require a camera on top of the meetings and other things that we're doing. Come to find out, I get everything set up last night. You know, a couple hours of recabling and doing all the things to get things set up the way that I want. And I find out that the camera uh, keeps freezing. Um, it would run for 15 to 45 seconds and then I would freeze in some really awkward pose. Uh, on the screen and couldn't figure out why. Uh, I'm like, well, uh, I've got a cable problem or maybe I got to for a USB port or maybe there's a driver or some firmware that needs to be upgraded. So I go through all these different changes. I'm changing stuff on the camera. I'm changing frame rates and super annoying things to kind of work through all of this. Come to find out at the end of the night that my dock is actually not compatible or is having compatibility problems with the capture device I'm using to grab the stream coming off of the camera. 
And because of that, it's conflicting and it freezes. And I had to buy a new capture device from a different vendor uh, in order to make this work. So I tell you all of this um, because it just made me think about business continuity and disaster recovery planning and all the work that we do uh, in our professions to make sure that um, when we have to recover, that things work well and that we test those capabilities. And here I was uh, uh, having to go through meetings today uh, and other work that I needed to do that required a camera, and I couldn't because my capture device uh, that I rely upon to make all of this integration work wasn't compatible with my existing capabilities. Uh, now, the cool thing is it's 2024. I ordered the new device last night on Amazon. I had it about 90 minutes ago. We tested it, and here we are being able to use it to record the podcast uh, here, but it made our podcast uh, you're getting this a couple days later than you normally would. So uh, lots of lessons to be learned here, but a great reminder why we do the kind of work that we do in business continuity and disaster recovery. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. We'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.